Morning all from the Viaduct. Uh, I've elected to come indoors today for obvious reasons. Um, pretty average weather here. Nasty. Bit of rain, bit of wind. Um, open the batting today. First comment. I'm going to try and keep it a bit more positive than normal today. But the first comment I'd like to make today is a big shout out to all my friends on the coast who have been reaching out and keeping with me. And I've got to say we're penetrating right across New Zealand, but it's just great to hear from old people from the coast. And the guy I want to have a, a shout out to today is one Colin Tuck. Tucky. You hear me at school, legend, legend family, iconic family, a boxing family, but uh, Tucky's in the in the chopper business and has been for a long time. I think he's flying out of Mount Cook the last I heard, but certainly down around the glaciers. And um, apparently he's got a very good white boat river sent me some videos, so don't be afraid to put a few kilos my way, Tucky. But um, those of you who come from the coast will remember Lou and Vern and Murray Tuck, uh, along with Graham Finlay and those sort of people. Great, great part of the world, the West Coast. Um, good men, hard men, enterprising men, men with constitution, a bit of spine. Not something we don't see a lot of in New Zealand these days, but uh, all good boxers. Um, bought up hard, you know, resources of the land, timber, mining, gold, that sort of thing. All you know, consigned to history now. But the Tuck family is still alive and well, and that's great to hear. So great to hear from you, Tucky. Keep it coming, you West Coasters. I love hearing from you. Uh, and, of course, that links me into the Pongias. Brendan, long-time friend of mine, and Quentin Q. Um, you know, died a couple of years ago, God bless you, Q. But it's just fantastic when you connect back up with those real people, proper people, you know? Not not the the woke, the people who wake up every morning nowadays wanting to be angry about something. I'm talking about coming back to the values, the traditional values of New Zealand and probably getting back to a bit of Hillary, Colin Meads, that type of thing, you know? I mean, you can be a liberal, a socially liberal person now and do the right thing, but you've still got to embrace those values that New Zealand was um, was based on what made New Zealand the unique country that it is. And we've been hijacked. We have been hijacked. The pendulum has swung too far to the woke, to the Greyland types, to the Waitakere types. So we'll sort that out in due course, though. But anyway, you're probably wondering where I am today. Very colourful background and colourful shirt, too, I might add. Not looking too bad for a bloke who's 66 next month. Looking pretty damn good, I've got to say. And feeling good in the boxing ring yesterday for a bit of fun. But I'm in the whiskey bar at HQ. The whiskey bars, you can see all the liquor behind me. Beautiful lights. They were made up in Indonesia. And um, it's bloody nice, I've got to say. It's a good feeling sitting here today in the warmth and dry. Now, get negatives out of the way first. So Ian Taylor, two great articles in the Herald this weekend. Two great articles in the Herald. Um, Aisha Beryl, Associate Minister of Health, doctor, proper doctor, not like David Clark before, the doctor of theology. He's here to sprinkle you with holy water to fix you. This is a proper doctor, Aisha Beryl. But, but already infected badly with that laden thing where they want to control your life and control the narrative. And she's trying to tell Siri and Taylor what he should and shouldn't be allowed to say about this um, this wonder molecular testing technology that he's discovered. They're using it in Singapore, Israel, all those highly sophisticated advanced countries. The US of A, obviously, it's called Lucera, COVID-19 test. It's, um, it's in that same sort of category as rats, that rats is the one everyone wants to talk about at the moment, but rats is antigen, this is molecular, that's the difference. But a very, very, very good uh, testing procedure. Expensive, but not ridiculously expensive in the context of, of quarantine, um, self-isolating MIQ. But Aisha Beryl is trying to muzzle Sir Ian Taylor. And the question you'll be asking why, and of course Bloomfield, Ashley Bloomfield's wrapped into this as well, he, he's the one seizing the rat test to consolidate, he says in inverted commas, uh, Ashley, it's called stealing, stealing of private enterprise. Because you won't do your job, because you're always so slow, you're so reactive, you're always miles behind the wave when it comes to technology and COVID strategy, as soon as the businessman like Sir Ian Taylor and people like him, in fact I've put myself in that category to a much lesser degree, as soon as we do something bold and show some initiative, you try and muzzle us. You try and channel us to do what you think's right. But the problem is, what you think's right is never right. You're always playing catch up. You're always three to six months behind. Every step of the way, PPE, vaccinations, um, reaching out to the sectors who are most vulnerable, looking after the elderly. You're always behind the eight ball, aren't you? You've been wrong on the antigen tests. I see they're all around the, the country now, after you finally stop stealing them off people. You're wrong about Sir Ian Taylor about this um, Lucera test, and that'll come soon. That'll be one of the most popular testing options we have, and you'll have to embrace it. But why don't you just say sorry, Ashley, and, and Asia? Just say, look, I'm sorry, we've cocked this up. We didn't listen to the right people, and now New Zealand has had a guts fall. And speaking of having a guts fall, this is my plan. Next week is Izzy Adesanya fighting. I'm an Izzy fan, he, he comes here a little bit, not often, but he comes here. He's been kind enough to donate himself as an auction item when we've done some charitable auctions here. And I love, I love Izzy's attitude to life. He's a bit edgy, you know. He does say that a couple of um, inappropriate things on occasions. But generally speaking, Izzy is uh, he's an immigrant from Africa. 
Um, you could argue perhaps that he's had not a lot in his favour early in his life, but he's, he's a fantastic example now of a high achiever, disciplined, disciplined city kickboxing, fantastic gym city kickboxing. Um, but as he takes it the whole way, he goes beyond the, the gym, beyond the training, beyond the commitment there. He's taking it to the world stage and he's fighting again next Sunday and that'll be a 12 to 4 o'clock show. So we'll be open and we'll be open with five zones of 100, won't be far from normal. And we'll be asking you to um, show your vaccine pass, nothing else. No scanning in, uh, no masks, not interested in that rubbish. It's over. New Zealand's got to move on. 80,000 supposedly, or 50,000 infected each day this weekend, 250 yesterday. 10 in hospital, that's one zero. 10. One in ICU, that's one. See that? That's one. One person in ICU. And New Zealand is in lockdown? Like, really? Red zone is still lockdown, let me tell you. It's just lockdown in disguise. It's still lockdown for business. It's still crushing us. But you're not crushing us anymore. Next week, I promise you, next weekend, we're back to normal. Totally. Back to normal. Come to HQ and just start living your life again. As long as you're vaccinated. Only rule. Get that bloody vaccine, because that vaccine saves lives. Now, moving on from that, so we've dealt with that. Uh, Valentine's Day Monday. Don't forget Valentine's Day Monday. Um, bring your loved one down to HQ for a nice little bit of whatever you do when you're out with the loved one. We won't go too far down that rabbit hole because we could end up anywhere. But suffice to say, we'd like to think you bring your loved one and behave, um, you know, as you would. Um, I'm trying to talk about it. Have some champagne, have some roses, do a bit of loving. Just get back to living your life. And I want to wrap today, because we're six minutes into already and I promise to keep it short. I want to wrap today by saying how excited I was this morning. Excited. When I picked up the Herald, and one of the lead stories was about Team New Zealand, Emirates Team New Zealand, our America's Cup team, who I've got to say I've been friends with since the uh, first America's Cup defence was here in 99, 2000, yeah? And that's the year that I opened here. I, I opened August the 3rd, 99, and um, just in time for the America's Cup. And what a, what a life changer it's been for Auckland. Um, Princess Wharf was initially where I was um, based with Euro Restaurant. Just closed recently, it's a bit of a tragedy. Chance I'll get it back though and, and reinvigorate it. But the viaduct itself, you know, that's an example of how in conjunction with private enterprise, Michael Fay, and Michael Fay long since handed the reins over, but Grant Dalton largely in recent years. Um, Team New Zealand, the viaduct, viaduct harbour holdings, a uh, little bit of council involvement, but thank God not too much. They've done their best to obstruct it. Uh, but despite their endeavours to bring it to its knees, um, we've still done well at the America's Cup. And as recently as last summer, even with COVID, we still did well. And, and I'm very keen to make sure the America's Cup stays here in some way, shape or form. I'm a bit limited in my powers at the moment. Once I get those mural robes on, uh, everything will change. I can promise you that. I'm a bench driven. I'm a hospitality guy. I want this to be an event city. I want it to be an activity city. Activity at every level. So... Team New Zealand today has announced the release very soon of the launching of their hydrogen powered chase boat, which is amazing. I love hydrogen technology. I find you get a certain type of person who has an opinion but is not capable of thinking coherently and they just default and say EV this, EV that, EV this, EV that. Uh, EV's a crop. It's a crop. It's a short term solution for people who can't think long term strategically. Hydrogen, green hydrogen technology is the future. There's a trial on in town at the moment with green hydrogen buses. And, uh, and I'm talking to the bus company and, and they're giving me some very useful information. But green hydrogen is where we're going with this town. Let me tell you that. I won't expand any more on that at the moment, but I want to say to Team New Zealand, I'm excited and I want to talk to you. Sean Reagan, Red Dog, you're the boat builder. Come over and see me. I need to understand where this hydrogen's at and how we bring this to the, uh, make the, um, that opportunity available to everybody across the city, in particular for all public transport, buses, ferries and blah, blah, blah. So, Green Hydrogen, well done Team New Zealand. While we're on the subject of the waterfront, and this is where I am going to wrap it today, Ports of Auckland, 80 hectares, 80 hectares. A lot of land, awful lot of land, doing parking cars, importing port. Now don't tell me there's no opportunity to shift this port, because there's been various papers around the shift it up north, for example, Wayne Brown paper, which I had a read of and didn't spin my wheels, don't think it's practical, doesn't work, get them into Whangarei, how are you going to get the cars back, etc, because it's an import port. Uh, the ports has to be condensed down or removed, and the sweet spot here is Taranga, which is an export port, and a couple of resource consent issues, but I can make sure central government sorts that out for you, and thank you central government for reaching out to me over the weekend too, and yes we can work together in case you're wondering. 
You can take that back to the Prime Minister and tell her I'm good to go. She's just got to reach out to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis and I'll take her call. Now, getting back to Taronga, so that's an example, an outstanding example of a, of a commercially listed entity that's operating efficiently and worth a lot of money, $7 billion. Ports of Auckland here in town, uh, 80 hectares, disastrous. Tony Gibson walked out, three deaths, not great, three deaths, terrible actually. Can't roll the technology out. 80 hectares valued, valued on their books at about $900 a square metre. Let me tell you, that land's worth 10 to 12,000 a square metre, and that's a starting point. That's coming back to the city, that land. We're going to use that to turn Auckland back into a great waterfront city of the Pacific Rim. So ports will have to condense right down or relocate entirely. But my view, if you're watching this, any of you ports of Auckland people, and including you, Goff, I know you watch my my little um, morning epistles, my verbal or sermons, I suppose you call them. That ports is going to be uh, owned by the city council, of course, so we can do this. That ports is going to be restructured, rebuilt, and relocated. And the sweet spot for that is using Tauranga as an export port, but there'll be more imports there. Auckland in a condensed form as import, uh, not much export, no reason to, but a land port, a land port in Hamilton. So there's your triangle of a sweet spot. Very, very doable, very easy to do. And I know you don't do anything golf, and I know you're not allowed to do anything uh, little Phil, Richard Hill's little Phil, very little Phil. Um, you're not allowed to do anything either because you're a Labour Party member and you have to follow the script in office, but that won't be happening. Uh, just like your mural campaign won't be happening, you'll be crushed before you even commence. But that waterfront, we're going to activate that and we'll come right down. It's not just the 80 hectares of uh, Ports of Auckland leader. It's right across Eastern Viaduct here. It's Queen's Wharf, it's Prince's Wharf, it's, it's the lot, it's Captain Cook, it's Bledisloe, across to the tank farm. We'll be taking control of that and we'll be turning that into something that makes the city a better city, something that makes the city a livable city, and something that adds value to the lives of the people who pay the rates in this city, or the visitors too, the tourists. Because at the moment, if you're a tourist and you come to Auckland uh, for this weekend, Waitangi weekend, not that many are travelling, but if you did and you said to me, or I said to you actually, what defines Auckland City for you? There's about a 7% chance you'd say the casino. And my response to that would be, well, no, thank you. That's preying on vulnerable people. We don't do that at Auckland City. We're a healthy city. We do things that are good for people, not things that are bad for people. And then you might say the harbour. And my response would say, well, that's not a bad idea, the harbour. When was the last time we went for a swim in the harbour? And you'll probably say, well, my auntie took me to Mission Bay or to Takapuna Beach, but we couldn't swim. Well, why couldn't you swim? Well, there were some turds or some used condoms floating in the water. No. Disgusting, but true. Disgusting, but true. Because water care problems, because we haven't fixed the water care problems. We're just trying to sell water care for about a tenth of what it's worth, or 20th actually. So we'll fix those problems for you. We'll get this waterfront activated, and we'll make the harbour accessible to everyone. Not just people with 75 foot boats, everyone. Across the eastern viaduct, where the Prada base was, where New team New Zealand still is, in the old event centre there, out onto North Wharf Tank Farm, activate it. Seaside swimming pools, places for people to enjoy. And we won't stop there. I'm 13 minutes into this, but I'm going to go one step further. I think we'll get rid of that bloody naval Devonport base across the harbour. Why the hell would any thinking nation have their naval base right in the, big, uh, in the middle of their biggest city, the beating heart of their economy? Because not that we intend to go to war with anyone, and God forbid we couldn't beat anyone anyway. If we did go to war, we've got no defence forces left. Nothing substantial. But if we did and they dropped a bomb in the middle of the city, what do you think is going to happen? Don't think too hard. Doesn't, doesn't read well, does it? When you start imagining and visualising about that, it only ends one way. Lots of blood and guts. And that's your blood and guts. So let's move that naval base up to Whangarei, because they need jobs in the north, and I'm a big supporter of the people of the north. So we send that up there, and we take that naval base land, and we turn that into a community-based facility, a park, because they're, they're lacking those on the North Shore, good community-based parks, and we put a water park over there. A little bit of private enterprise, but we activate the waterfront in conjunction. So the waterfront will be like I've done here at HQ, which everyone seems to love now, but before I come along, no one wanted to touch it. No one would do it. Council wouldn't even give me a resource consent for it. They outsourced it. But of course, once I did it, it's changed Auckland. As you would have seen in the paper yesterday, after five years we're to pack up, we're about to pack up and we're gonna move on. I've got a mayoral campaign to run. I've got nine years ahead of me as being your mayor, making a huge change to the city, a change as the city's never seen the like of before, and I have other hospitality interests that I have to consolidate and relocate to. So that's the sermon today. Thank you for listening to me once again. Go over and like the Leo page. It's not Leo for Mayor, it's just Leo Malloy. It's called Business Consultant. And in case you're wondering why it is that. It's because we just don't want to yet declare 
that we are uh, political. Because at the moment we're running on the basis that I'm not politically aligned to any party, that I'm a business person with considerable experience, and that we can roll this council and give it a bloody good shake-up purely because I have the business acumen. Uh, having, having said that, I will work with everybody across the political spectrum, obviously, as I always do. And on that note, 15 minutes into it, I'm going to say over and out. Thank you for listening once again. Big shout-out again to my friends on the coast. Take care, and never forget, Leo Vermeer. There's only one choice. I am number one, and there is no number two. See you tomorrow.